on Winnie's race. Yeah. Now, tell us about Equinome, which is the equine genetics programme of which you're a director and, and an enthusiast. Now, yeah. according to its research, Dawn Approach should not stay the Derby trip. Is that right? Yeah, I think we told you too much initially. <laughs> um, we probably should have kept it on the wraps. About 5% of CC horses uh, get up to a mile and a half. But it's usually the ones with very good temperaments and a lot of class. Right. Yeah. So he would fall into that category? Well, I think he falls into the 5%, yeah. And explain what, what you mean when you say CC rather than CT or TT. Well, d- every horse has, has uh, two letters of the gene, uh, either a CC, a CT or a TT. And uh, the TTs normally uh, are fairly late developers. You wouldn't normally see them on the track until uh, July, August time. And then as three-year-olds, they'd probably need a mile and a quarter. And uh, we'll stay anything then up to two miles or two and a half miles. And uh, the CT horses, uh, for the classics, they would probably be the most desirable. Uh, But as I said earlier, the 5% of the CCs uh, can give them plenty to think about as well. How long have you been using this information to help guide your training and your planning? Uh, I think it's about three years now, but uh, the research was going on for about seven years before that. Like We we know what all our horses were going back seven or eight years and uh, been using it then for breeding, I think, for uh, uh, four years. And how did you first come across it, the research? Well, Emmeline Hill uh, developed it or or, or, uh, uh, discovered it in UCD. And then uh, up to that, we had supplied all the horses for the research. So she was in and out of the place all the time. So the natural follow-on for her then to set up the company uh, was to go and do something. She needed some capital and uh, she came to me at that stage. And I put up some capital and took a sharehold. And has it been worth the investment? Have you found it very useful? Uh, well, I find it extremely useful. So much so that uh, when she first discovered it, I was thinking of trying to buy her off <laughs> and keep it to myself. But that wouldn't have been uh, very fair or very ethical. And uh, it, it, it being a scientist, she wanted to share it with the whole world. So are you in any way torn then between... Dawn of, oh, oh, you've got the get-out, haven't you? The 5%? Uh, well, I, I think he's in the 5%, yeah. Well, I hope he is. Very best of luck. I know you're not nervous at this point, but very best of luck, and I hope he is one of the 5%. Thanks, Lydia. Thank Thank you. you. Nice draw looking at uh, just this day, uh, who's the favourite for our second race at Muscle Brothy. Tote Scoop 6, Edinburgh Castle Stakes. It's a conditions race for two-year-olds, and all seven run. David Ellsworth looking for a quick double as his jockey Dane O'Neill and Justice Day's 11 to 8. It's 5 to 2 Sleeper King, 13 to 2 Withensee, 15 to 2 Susie's Connoisseur, Pigeon Pie's 11 to 1, 14 Jacotte de Delahaye, and 33 to 1 Vina Donada. And Justice Day has comes out well in front on figures here, uh, both on terms of um, ratings and speed figures. He started off his career by beating the the subsequent useful Steventon Star at Newbury. A second at Ascot was then followed by a win at Newmarket. That was over six furlongs, the latest win. So dropping back to a sharp five might not be entirely in his favour. And he does have a six-pound penalty. But for all that, Justice Day is the uh, definitely the one the others have to aim at. A well-backed second favourite in Sleeper King, who himself was backed at big prices on his debut at York uh, just over two weeks ago, 25s into 12s then, and ran very well to finish fourth, beaten only a length and a half. That was over six furlongs on soft ground. So he too is dropping back in trip and meeting a much livelier surface. I can confirm that the first race at Musselburgh was run in a time that dipped below standard, so the good to firm good in places looks pretty accurate. Third favourite is Withensee, Richard Fahey and Tony Hamilton, who followed his fourth at Ripon on debut with a, a win here at Musselburgh. And uh, that was a month ago. He's a perfectly reasonable effort, but does leave him with something to find with the top one in terms of the, the figures he recorded on that occasion. Pigeon Pie won on his debut, her debut even, at Newcastle. And 
The third and fourth have come out of that race and won, so that's given the, the race some sort of solidity. She carries a three-pound penalty being a filly and uh, represents, obviously, Mark Johnson. We're looking at uh, Avina Denada going in the stalls, and uh, hopefully they'll all go in quite reasonably, although that looks like Withensee just, just giving a little trouble at the start. Hopefully that will only be a little trouble. Let's go up and join Gareth. Yeah, it won't be too much longer before we are ready here. Provided that uh, Withensee, who uh, was quite taken with uh, when uh, he won here last time out, goes into the stalls. And uh, it's just playing up a little a little bit here. It was, um, it was Chacot Delahaye who was uh, the one who looked pretty green on the way to post. Uh, this fellow went down absolutely fine, but... It's clearly just uh, requiring a little bit of encouragement from the stalls handlers. With and Z playing up a bit here. Stalls handlers gradually edging the uh, Son of Dark Angel towards the starting stalls. All of the others waiting patiently. With and Z has gone in. Stalls handler seems okay. Took a small tumble there, but. He's up on his feet. So now we're just waiting on Jacotte Delahaye to go into store number six and complete the lineup for the 2.20 at Musselburgh. Jacotte Delahaye. Of course, this was the horse who was playing up a little bit on the way down to post. She's about to be loaded up into store number six. All of the others are waiting patiently. And still we wait for Jacot Delahaye. Just this day, the market leader for David Ellsworth and Dane O'Neill, who are both looking for a double after landing the first with Claregib. Jacot Delahaye not having any of it, is she? And... Uh, He's backing away at the moment, going in the wrong direction. And it looks as if the blindfold is now going to be applied. So, blindfold goes on. Jacot Delahaye doesn't seem to like that a great deal either, but she can't necessarily see where she's going. She is being urged forward to the starting stalls. Blindfold has pretty much done the job. They're ready, and they're off. Uh, racing for the Tote Scoop 6, Edinburgh Castle Stakes. A conditions race over the five furlong straight course. Justice Day broke out well in the purple with the red cap. Over to the far side is Sleeper King in the noseband. They're a length and a half ahead of Pigeon Pie, who's on the outside. With and see following these in fourth, and then Jacot Delahaye in the yellow. A couple of lengths further behind them to find the dark blue of Susie's Connoisseur, and Veen Donada in white is in company with that one. Making the journey on towards the halfway point, and the dog leg turned back towards us, and and at Justice Day away to the right is travelling well here, shows up by half a length to Sleeper King. And then Jacot Delahaye, one from the left is Susie's Connoisseur, on the left is Pigeon Pie, Vina Donada following those, and Withensee has run no sort of race. They head on with a furlong and a bit left to go. The whip is now drawn for Justice Day against the rails, with Sleeper King pressing hard. They've always been the first couple here, so in the noseband it is Sleeper King with Justice Day against the fence in the yellow colour. Jacot Delahaye finishing off her race pretty well, together with Susie's Connoisseur. Up to the line they go, Justice Day in the centre, Sleeper Sleeper King, Sleeper King, might just have got there from Justice Day. They were always prominent, and as the first two, they passed the line one and two, with Jacot Delahaye running a good race, having played up at the start, and over to the far side was Susie's Connoisseur. The well-back second favourite beats the well-back favourite in a race that the two dominated. Sleeper King beats Justice Day in a thrilling finish for our conditions race for two-year-olds at Musselburgh this afternoon. There he is. Kevin Ryan's a trainer, Philip Macon in the saddle, and he and the favourite fought it out throughout. He travelled better than Justice Day, and uh, that probably was the telling factor in the end. Justice Day was under pressure long before Sleeper King had to be asked all the questions by Phil Philip Macon, and in the end, he's only just scrambled home. You'd think that Justice Day will be suited by a step back up to six furlongs, and Jacot de la Haye, despite giving trouble behind the stalls, has run well in third. 
It suits his connoisseur, who was done no favours at the start in fourth. There is the winner. Nine to four, Sleeper King. Justice Day, the even money favourite. And all seven ran.